let's get ready to record our first track. Plug your microphone into your audio interface. If you have more than one input, take note of what input you're using. I suggest using input number one for everything. So what next? How do we get audio from our microphone into Reaper? The first thing we need to do is to create a track to record onto. That you can do that using Control T on Windows or Command T on a Mac, or just double clicking in the track area. Next thing to do after creating the track is to name the track. The audio files that get recorded will also have the name of this track. So naming your tracks will make your life a lot easier later on. And you can always change the track name later. In this case, I'll be recording acoustic guitar. So I'll call the track acoustic guitar. Next, we need to tell Reaper where to listen for the audio to record. So click the mouse on the input settings for that track to display a menu. The exact options on this menu will depend on which audio interface you're using. I'll be recording acoustic guitar with one microphone, so I'll choose the mono option from the input settings menu. I plug the mic into input number one, analog one in my case, so I'll choose that input. These options will likely be different on your machine. Adjusting levels. Warning, the next few minutes could be very boring, but pay attention. Recording at the right level will make a huge difference to the quality of your recordings. So how do I know my recording levels are good? Well, before we actually start recording, we need to make sure everything's connected properly. Each track has its own record arm disarm toggle button. It's the red circle next to the track name. We're gonna press that. And this button does double duty. First, we'll be using it so Reaper will display the level of the audio coming into the track. But of course, it's also used to tell Reaper whether to play back recorded audio or to record new audio onto the track. When the track is armed, it will record audio, and when it's disarmed, it'll play back the recorded audio. If everything is hooked up correctly, and I've chosen the right input, the meter on the far right of the panel, after the track number, should have a reddish background color, and the meter should light up a yellowish color when I make a sound. Tap the microphone gently to see that the meters in Reaper respond to the tapping. If you don't see the meters moving, it could be because you have the microphone plugged into a different input on your audio interface, or the input gain may be turned all the way down, so try turning it up. Or your microphone may need phantom power. If so, look for a button labeled 48V for 48 volts, but check the mic manufacturer's website to find out if your mic requires phantom power. Be careful not to send phantom power to a mic that doesn't need it. This is where the important stuff comes in. Setting levels is something you do on your interface, not in Reaper. You'll need to adjust your input gain on your interface. Usually, that's a knob close to where the mic is plugged in, usually labeled gain or level. Think about this knob like a tap, but instead of letting water through, it lets sound through. If there's not a lot of water pressure, you have to open up the tap further to get the water through. Likewise, if the sound you're recording is quiet, you have to turn up the gain to let more sound flow through. On the other hand, if there's a ton of water pressure, you might need to turn the tap down to control the flow. Likewise, if you're recording a loud sound, you'll need to turn down the gain to limit the amount of sound that comes through. This is important because there's a maximum level that can be recorded. And if we exceed that level, we'll hear distortion. On the flip side, if we don't let enough level through, we'll have to turn up the sound to hear it well. And with it, we'll also turn up unwanted noise or hiss, and we'll lose detail in the sound. So how do we know where to set our input level? We need it to be loud enough so we can hear it without any unwanted noise or hiss, but not so loud that we get distortion. And we can't necessarily use our ears for this. We need to rely on the meters in Reaper. And if you look at the mixer panel at the bottom of the window, directly above the meter is a number showing the difference in level between your loudest sound and the maximum level you can record. And this is called headroom. It's like the distance between your head and the ceiling. You don't want to be too close. If you happen to exceed the loudest level, Reaper will tell you by showing a red bar at the top of the meter. And this is called clipping. And this is where distortion happens. Try playing the loudest part of the song and make sure you don't clip. I suggest leaving 6 to 10 dB of headroom. That should be loud enough while giving you a good safety margin so you don't get distortion. Let's see what our levels are like. That's a little low. I think I'll turn up the gain. Oops, I clipped. 
I'll turn down the gain a little. To clear the clip light, just click on it. You can also reset the headroom meter by clicking on it as well. It's also important, after the input gain has been set on your audio interface, just leave it. You spent time getting a good recording level, and you know why it's important. Now, of course, you will have to do this for each instrument you record. Now I want to hear the metronome and my guitar in my headphones. So how do I do that? Plug your headphones into your audio interface. If you have speakers plugged in, turn them all the way down or just turn them off. We want to listen to our click track while we record, but we don't want the microphone to hear it and have it get recorded with the acoustic guitar. And also, we don't want any feedback. Now we need to create a monitor mix, or a headphone mix. This is just for recording purposes. This mix will not be heard by anyone, well, except you. And you'll be hearing what I'm hearing in my headphones as we go forward. Now I'm going to open up Total Mix. This is the direct monitoring software that came with my audio interface. If your audio interface comes with direct monitoring software, it'll look different than this, but the basic functions will be the same. I'm going to make sure the metronome is enabled and press play in Reaper to hear the click track. And while the click track's playing, I'm going to play the guitar and adjust the amount of guitar I hear back in the headphones. If I need to adjust the volume of the click, I'll open up the metronome settings in Reaper by right-clicking on the metronome in the main toolbar and adjust the volume there. This may seem like a lot of work for just one track, but the same principles apply when working on huge mixes with dozens of tracks. And quite often we need to hear something differently when we're performing than we would want to hear as a listener. And now that I'm happy with the balance, I'm ready to record.